Hey there viewers, my name's Trinsky and welcome back to a DCSS Monday. Also, ruined the intro because I forgot to mute my laptop. But of course, today we're going to be jumping back into the usual routine, trying to get a win with every species in the game. And I'm very excited for today because of course, Peter's brood is going to swoop in here and try and get some sweet, sweet vengeance. And maybe, just maybe, we can make it out of the dungeon with the Orb of Zot in tow this time around. Who's to say? So without further ado here, let's hop into it and get ready to go. Hey, Sakuza, how's it going? I hope you're having a fantastic start to your week, I guess. Oh, it's the long weekend, isn't it? So hopefully you had a great long weekend if you're living somewhere that celebrates it. And let's get ready to hop in, shall we? And what background do we wish to go with at the start of today's session? We could like father like son this and go for earth elementalist but i was also tempted to go back to ice elementalist see if we can't make that work still haven't had the opportunity to cast polar vortex at all and i i definitely want to try it out give it a whirl and see how that goes so maybe we could go that route instead of trying to bring shatter up online by the late game we can instead aim towards polar vortex see if that gives us the little bit of an edge we need to get through this in one piece you know what, it's just so we're not stuck here all day, because making a decision, you never know. I might be stuck here all day. Let's just force it. And as mentioned yesterday, we are Thieven Van Helsing. Van Helsing? Not today. You ready, Seguzo? I, I sure hope so. I hope I'm ready as well. <laughs> never know. But okie Doki, turn off dodging stealth train just a little bit of ice magic for now we can even set some caps on these bad boys swing ice magic up to 10 somewhere around there we'll see how it goes as we continue on here and of course there's the hiccup to sort through here as per usual, I'm going to turn on all the throwing items, even though generally with this kind of character, we don't end up actually using them, but you never know when it might come in handy, so we'll definitely do so just in case. I'll also do a quick dump file, and I knew I was forgetting something when I got set up today. And that's it right there. Always need to do the little bit of navigation just to get to our, our morgue here. And we can grab that seed. Because of course, just in case there's anyone trying to play along at home, see how they handle the same dungeons that we're going through, you can do so by going to... You know, I thought I could finish this before I finish my sentence. And unfortunately, not quite. Let's throw a new game seed up here. But you can use this seed, try it out for yourself, and see how you do. Show just how much better you are than me, because I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of you were. And with that all out of the way, we're ready to hop into it, and let's get some revenge, shall we? Definitely pick up the first weapon that we come across. And wield that bad boy. Not too shabby. And since we don't have attacks of opportunity yet, we can definitely just round, run around a bit, make sure that we're replenishing our mana. I guess less so when I back myself into a corner like a complete fool, but should be all good by this stage. Fortunately, we're not playing on a sprint again this time around, so we're doing a little bit better in terms of the general layouts of these fights. Not too shabby. Maybe we'll pick up a dagger just in case we can get off a stab or two down the road. And we are rolling for sure. It's nice to pick up a polearm as your your first object here, because we can at least get in that one free attack as our enemies are approaching when they're this one space away. Tab once, and then we can use freeze just to finish them up and make sure that we're staying as safe as we, we possibly can in this situation. <laughs> Got myself a little mixed up there, but no worries. You can take a look at level 3 is when everything changes. Till then, we're in a, a pretty rote pattern here, not too worried about anything. Ooh, Blink and Manifold Assault right away. Okay. 
Could end up taking this in a little bit of a semi-hybrid direction with Manifold Assault. That could be fun. That sprint was intense. It was a lot of fun. I always enjoy those little sprints. And I'm glad that we got a decent run at it. Not too good. Didn't make it past the, uh, the kind of vaults area. But definitely a fun little thing to show off. Again, I was really happy to do so, especially since people, a lot of people in the audience had never tried out the sprints before, and I do personally find them to be a lot of fun. So I'm always happy to, to share that around a little bit. Oops, definitely should have been using Freeze a little bit earlier there, but fortunately, where you don't have too many problems dealing with early adders as an Ice Elementalist, it's nice having something like Freeze that's a guaranteed hit, because usually the evasion is what you're really fighting up against. And it will only get better from here as we learn Frozen Ramparts and Ozokubu's Armor. Still at dangerous miscast level, but only 7%, so if we need to use them, we shouldn't have too much trouble in that regard. And otherwise, we can just keep her moving here. Early Shield is also a, a good potential usage. Aha, and Natasha. So we'll leave Natasha alone as much as we possibly can, as per our, our usual routine in the game here. Oh my gosh. You're so much scarier than anything else we've fought against. <laughs> well, turns out one little goblo, uh, goblin, couldn't decide if I want to say goblo or goblin, but one goblin with a hunting sling is all it takes to put the fear of God into me. Jeez Louise. Here's where Frozen Ramparts truly gets to shine, especially this early on in the game. Absolutely incredible. And not too bad. We'll also have to decide who we want to worship this game. We've been going with Vehemet recently on our casters. This time around, we could go for Sif Muna if we wanted. Because we could really kind of lean into the fact that we got that nice early... Ooh, are those fencing gloves? They're not interesting empowering their wearer with the force created by a blind step from ignorance to certainty heals when we drink unknown potion and restores our mp when we read unknown scrolls huh i've never seen these gloves before that's wild Compl completely took the wind out of my sails in terms of what we were trying to say a minute ago but interesting Um, but what I was going to get to is that we might lean towards Sif Muna this time around. Maybe, just maybe, and see if we can't get a full selection of spells under our belt throughout the course of the game. Oh, that's cool. I agree. Yeah, now again, I've never seen these before. I mean, I'll take it just for the two pips of AC. That's pretty incredible in its own right. And this early on in the game, that seems quite lovely. Especially with my generalized playstyle of forgetting to identify stuff until far too late in the run. Maybe, just maybe, this time around it's going to be worth the wait. Use them to replenish some, some health and MP. We get semi-heal potions off of any potion, so that's pretty dang sweet. I'm curious how much that heal will be. Maybe try not to use it in the most panicked of situations. Just because we don't know exactly how that will shake out. Maybe, just maybe, it could save our lives. That's all you can really ask for. But off to a, a really good start here. About this stage in the Ice Elementalist game is where I start feeling really comfortable because having Ozkuba's armor and frozen ramparts is a very incredible combo. So we'll armor up, put down our ice walls, and let the majority of these bad boys kill themselves. We even have a Polarm this time, so we can actually tab through the fight with the Halberd user here. So it all works out quite nicely. In fact, having the Polarm is really good with Frozen Ramparts, just to ensure that we can always attack things, even as they're on the, the initial approach. Not too shabby. We'll probably also want to learn Blink here. In fact, maybe I'll do so right away. And we can learn just a little bit of translocations. It's not going to take a whole lot, so that's pretty sweet. For you, Sakuza, you read every scroll that you have two of on the third floor, just for the chance of early acquirement. Hey, that's true. You never know. And it can be a huge game changer in the early game. 
I'm mostly just lazy is my big thing. There's no tactical reason or logical explanation as to why I do what I do. For whatever reason, I just never think to read scrolls until we have like seven of one stack and you're pretty sure it's ID. Laziness is a virtue? You know what, I'll take it. Maybe not always specifically in my case, but I definitely have a lot of appreciation for laziness in general, if done right. As long as you're able to put in some of the thought behind stuff, then being lazy just makes you more efficient in some ways. But maybe that's just my, my program side coming through, because a lot of times it's programmed specifically that you want to be a, the right amount of lazy. Too lazy and you're not going to get any of the important stuff done. But just lazy enough and you might be on to something. Do you want know Estachio, if you're going to keep blinking away, I'm actually going to run off since we don't have enough mana to recast Frozen Ramparts. And we'll just leave them alone for now and maybe, just maybe, we can level up one more time before we have to take that bad boy down. Oh, jeez, Louise. That is terrifying. And... Oh my gosh. And I'm dead. <laughs> I was so excited to use these gloves, but I think I took two hits in one turn. Holy moly, that is a lot of health. Well, Steven, you tried your best to avenge your father. <laughs> oh, poor Steven. Poor Steven. <laughs> hey, Laurie-ish, thank you so much for the... The gifted sub. I really appreciate it. In order to Sakuzu. Or Sakuzo, sorry. But thank you so much. I do really appreciate it. Especially at a time of of great morning like this. That's your your girlfriend Sakuzo. Well welcome. Glad to have you around as well. Thank you so much for dropping by in general and for gifting the sub as well. Thank you. Maybe that will get us through tonight without crying for poor Steven. And geez, I didn't even have a pre-cash name ready to go here because I was hoping that would last at least long enough to get the brain juices flowing. So what do we wish to do now? I guess who's another, another vampire that I like? I feel like I had some names written down a while back. If I go into my yield notebook here, aha, I do have a bunch. Right, we could be Louis or Lestat, if we have any interview with the vampire fans out there. Or what else do I have here? Viago, Vladislav, and Bruke, if we want to continue with the Peter trend of going off of uh, what we do in the shadows. You know what, I think we'll go today with... Oh, and we don't want to name here because I can't do spaces, but that's fine. And yes, we're very sad about Stephen. I appreciate your condolences. I'll pass it on to the rest of Stephen and Peter's family. But you know, we didn't get the chance to stretch our legs as an nice ice elementalist, so let's give it one more shot here. We'll go in with Viago. Let's see if that can get us going. Or Steven, indeed. We'll get him next time, kid. So this is gonna be... Let's go with this is Steven's brother, another one of Peter's brood, and maybe just maybe. This will be the vampire that gets to avenge the family name, restore our family's honor. Would be nice. But of course, there are never any guarantees here in the Deep Dark Dungeon. Especially when you take... What was it, like 20 damage in one turn? Oof, oof. But we'll, of course, do another dump file here. Again, for all you lovely folk out there who want to join along for the ride, see how you do. We'll throw this bad boy up on the screen real quick. And there we go. And with that, let's hop right back into it, shall we? You can do it, Viago. I almost called you Stephen. <laughs> but Viago this time, of course. Just the the vampire we needed. Again, we'll take full advantage of the fact that we don't have a tax of opportunity quite yet in this version of the game. It makes life a wee bit easier for sure. 
can always run away like the the coward i am and that's always fantastic in its own right early amulet i was hoping it'd be anything other than amulet of faith but it's not the end of the world who knows we might end up wanting an extra wee bit of piety down the road take whatever we can get really and we'll see we can be the change we want to see in the world that's the plan at the very least and just have to be careful of those dang centaurs it's funny because i didn't actually explain my reasoning where we went around the corner and then taking the step up towards the door is what killed us and it's because i felt like if i was at that corner the centaur was going to go to an edge and just shoot across so i still think that it was potentially the right idea but unfortunately didn't quite shake out the way we we drew it up on the the planning board but these things happen of course and it's all good at the end of the day because this this right here is going to be the god seed that we always wanted get ready for the the triple acquirement scrolls on d2 or by d2 at the very least don't see how it could possibly go wrong Notice me, please. There we go. And definitely don't hit ourselves. And we should be just about there. Yeah, we're at 93%. So again, level 3 is the, the big leagues here. Perfect. We can immediately learn our, our favorite duo here. Ooh, we don't have quite enough spell levels yet. But we're just a smidge off. So it should just be but a moment here. And at least we have... Frozen Ramparts is the one we learned, right? Correct. So that should do us a fair amount of good at the end of the day. I'm just more so sad that we never got to see just how effective those fancy gloves were. Because, like I mentioned, I'd never actually seen them before. And it, it definitely seemed like a very interesting mechanic, to say the least. So if anyone out there has experienced them in their own gameplay, definitely let me know how much of a, a heal and an MP boost you get out of that. Because I'm exceptionally curious. So should be getting those backstabs when we get the chance. Perfect. A plus two helmet? Now there we go. That's another really good early find. Three AC is a world of difference for your early spellcasters at the very least. Lovely stuff. It's a bit of an awkward looking icon in terms of hats, but we'll make it work. At least it's, it's a nice bright red and there's a lot of red and gold things in the dungeon. So who knows? Maybe we can get a nice cohesive outfit going. It's always important to make sure you're looking fashionable as you destroy evil in its most banal form. Banal form, I guess is the right way to say that word. Probably don't want to worship Zin either. We could have gone for the, uh, the Fated Altar, of course. And I'm tempted to, but I did really want to go with a... Uh, a Sif Muna run this time around to get something a little bit different from what we've been experiencing and plus the fact that Sif Muna is always nice because it's guaranteed that you'll get every spell in the game by the end and I'm hoping that we can do some fun stuff throughout the course of the run. I'm looking at you Polar Vortex. The new range no animo update with deck scaling and trunk is really fun can't wait to hit live. Me too. Yeah it's definitely awesome to make ranged a little bit more viable at least when you're not always forced to go <laughs> always forced to go with something like okawaru so you get gifted the ammo so i'm excited to see how it affects things i don't know why i decided to fight here i saw the orc priest so do as i i say but not as i do folks this is not exactly ideal at the very least we are in a half decent spot now with the priest dead unfortunately these wizards could still blast us from afar and that's always a bit of a painful thing but we no longer are confused so that's nice make sure that we're keeping our frozen ramparts up and running and then you sir i guess all we can really do is throw a stone and hope that our frozen ramparts take you down <laughs> tree carry for sure for anybody who looks down or snubs our lovely lignification potions there's exhibit a for why 
early game especially, they can be an incredible boon. Not a lot of potions would have helped us out there besides the heal wounds, but that was asking for a little bit much for sure. So I will gladly take it and a pair of artifact gloves early on. Resistance electricity, some extra slay, and strength plus five. Don't mind if I do, just for the resistance electricity alone, I'd be willing to put these bad boys on. And the strength will just help us potentially wear some, some extra armor, which is actually very fitting. Gloves of the armored one? Game knew what it was doing when it randomly generated that bad boy. <laughs> exactly what we need this kind of a, a pair of gloves for. But not too shabby. I'm not seeing any centaurs yet, so you're saying there's a chance. We're back up to a very similar point to where we got to. Unfortunately, this time around, we don't have Blink. That could have been very handy to have available to us, but we should be able to make it through without too much of a an issue here. Especially if we do end up worshipping Sif Moon now, because hey, we'll have access to Blink and Manifold Assault and what have you before the end of things. Hello friends, some more roving orcs. Hello, hello. At least we get a magic dagger out of that, so this is pretty fantastic, and it's a dagger of speed. Definitely not bad. It's not the ideal weapon. Usually you want something like poisoning early on on a character like this is always really helpful. But I will take whatever we can get, of course. Can't exactly be too greedy after picking up a lovely pair of artifact gloves on D3. <laughs> Doesn't get much better than that, folks. Okie dokie, let's hopefully just blast our way through the, the early game here now that we're back to a pretty solid state. If I could get all of you to come to me real quick, that would be fantastic. And all of you as well. Perfect. I do love Frozen Ramparts. It is definitely one of my favorite spells in the entire game. Even against Blork, I think we have a chance here. Normally I'd be pretty scared. It is 15 damage from each of those spells, so it is going to be a little bit frightening, don't get me wrong. But as long as they step onto our ice, we should be alright. We're still in Ozukuku's armor, so that's lovely. And we can quiver these poison darts and maybe throw some of those. Between that and our speed dagger, we should be able to keep up to the, the hasted Blork. Dang it, Natasha. You weren't supposed to be here, friend. I will take a plus four short sword of venom. That's pretty incredible. And fortunately, Natasha never noticed us, so hopefully we can get through the rest of this floor without accidentally needing to kill her. Because we never want to take out poor Natasha, of course, as long as we can help it. We still have one stairwell that we can make it to, as well as, I guess, exploring down this way. There we go. That's about right. <laughs> yeah, back for round two. Round two of me trying my very best not to to murder our poor our poor kitty cat friend they don't deserve to be taken out of this world not if i can help it at the very least fortunately there's always the backup that if we do need to kill them cats have multiple lives so it's not exactly the be all end all of our our moral crusade here again saw it Someday I should actually make an official list of all the, the uniques that either I'm not willing to kill themselves or have some court sort of side mission, like with uh, Pickle and, and Kirke, because with both of them it's the followers that we refuse to kill, of course, and the, the lead uniques are the, the villains of our storylines here. Okie dokie. This is becoming pretty much just more of a pain than it's worth to try and avoid. I try to use um, auto-explore as much as possible. Again, playing into that whole laziness side of things, of course. Also, probably should switch over to our plus four short sword, since that is a pretty nice get here. And should allow us to take care of Ustachio relatively quickly between that and our frozen walls. Perfect. And not too shabby. A plus one falchion of draining. 
Could be an all right change if we wanted to switch over to long blades. I think we're okay for now. Pretty happy. But not too shabby. And there's the Economical Temple. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, and it's, it's a Lucy Temple. Would you look at that? So that means that we don't have that many altars to worship at. So do we want to change our, our plan here? Hmm. Could, of course, try going for Vehumet again. At least that way we have the guaranteed access to, at the very least, Polar Vortex and maybe some good damage spells throughout the course of the run. Ashen Zari is just always a good option. I do think Ashen Zari is potentially top tier god. I find it tough because I have a lot of bias towards Gozeg. I find the way that Gozeg's potion petition makes up for consumable loss, as well as being able to bribe your way through Zot just makes everything so much easier in that final section of the game. Arguably the hardest section becomes a lot more trivial when you have a couple of orbs of fire on your side of the equation. But Ashen Zari is just so strong these days with those skill boosts that it, it definitely does a lot of the heavy lifting. And hey, Thelfon, I'm glad you managed to catch us today. Always lovely to see you around. Thank you so much for dropping on by. And oh, Ash, you got your first win ever from Ash, just knowing where threats were before you next to them was huge. That's a good point, too. It's a free antenna upgrade. And this one doesn't force you to be unable to wear hats, so that's always nice. It's been a hot minute since we worshipped Ash and Zari. I do really want certain spells, but I can always hope that we find access to them throughout. And if not, it's not the end of the world. You always have to roll with the punches and deal with whatever the dungeon sees fit to send your way. So at the end of the day, we just need some way of getting through. And plus, this also gives us... A huge advantage in terms of nullifying my own laziness and stupidity because we just need to tear up a little bit here and of course we will gain access to free identify and that is always fantastic. Do I feel like I could take Sigmund right now? Mm. It would be a tough one so maybe for the time being let's uh, exclude that bad boy out of here. And we'll just try and explore the rest of the level as much as we safely can. Natasha. I would say lovely to see you, but I try not to lie these days. <laughs> Maybe in another time when we're not dead set on killing each other. The question is, is never could I take Sigmund? It's could Sigmund take me? You remember old Sigmund? That was Nightmare Fuel? Oh yeah. Jeez Louise. No, oh, back in the day... That was definitely the the death sentence for many a character here in the Deep Dark Dungeon. Fortunately, Sigmund hasn't been as much of a problem as of late. For whatever reason, I feel like I don't die to Sigmund too much these days. I think a large part of it is just because I'm so scared of them that I'm usually in a, a much better place by the time we have to try and take them on. We also hear the hissing of sand nearby. Ah, thank you, Ash. Making my life a heck of a lot easier, making sure that we gain access to this ossuary here. Ossuary is going to be a bit of a pain in the butt, just because the majority of things are resistant to cold, but we should be fine. And you die more to crazy UF than Sigmund? <laughs> again, greediness? I feel that. For me, it's not UF because they're, again, somebody that falls onto our list of do not kill unless absolutely necessary. But I definitely feel like Yuf is somebody to be feared often, especially because they can a lot of the time have a, uh, a Chaos branded weapon. And when you come across that in the early game, oh me oh my, are you potentially in trouble. But here's where that plus three short sword we picked up is going to be exceptionally helpful at getting through a bunch of these, these buddies. Because again, with their resistances, it would normally be quite the, the pain in the rear just to get through this. Risk entire run for a cape? Yes, <laughs> sounds about right. No, I like to let sleeping dogs lie, so usually I leave you up alone, but I I definitely fully understand the the benefits of an early UF kill, especially when they're wearing like a really nice willpower cloak or something like that. I mean it's 
it's hard to say no sometimes for sure okie dokie let's let's keep heading off here oh speak of the devil hello friend trifle cake eyeball ragdoll and also with you uf what do you have quarter staff of chaos and a plus zero cloak <laughs> oh yes the quarter staff of chaos but of course as mentioned on my side of things we'll let let our friend just live out their days in peace here gets a little bit more sleep Especially since, fortunately, they don't have an incredible cloak that's going to tempt me to stray away from my, my morals here. But let's see. Ashen Zarya invites us to partake in a vision. And we have cunning and fortitude. Hmm. That's all defensive skills in one fell swoop here. And yeah, Felfon, it is Ice Elementalist. Definitely one of my favorite starts. Especially back in the day when Frozen Ramparts was stupid broken. But even now... Between Frozen Ramparts just being amazing area of effect damage, as well as Ozukubu's armor, um, allowing you to survive a lot of things that spellcasters have trouble with in the early game, I think it's a pretty potent combination for sure. You still have those? Somehow now that the game favors magic, you've got more melee? See, I definitely can respect that. I feel like I sway back and forth all the time as well, and often, much like you mentioned there, it has nothing to do with the current like meta state of either department. It's more of a, a personal kind of aptitude for whatever you need to go with in that regard. But I think I will take this curse. I'd probably like to go with something more on the elemental side, but I could probably just bind our, our plus two helmet to us for the time being. Put something a little bit nicer on these gloves so that we can potentially keep them around long term if possible alternatively we could just boom the rope here but i actually like getting these defensive skills i don't think that that's too shabby i also meant to check out this sling of flame hey hmm Hey, Dr. Pirate, how's it going? I hope you've had a, a fantastic long weekend. Just come to a close here, but... Hope you're having a, a lovely Monday as well, of course. Always fantastic to see you around as well. And they are nice gloves indeed. Yeah, getting artifact gloves on D3 is going to be pretty huge for, you know, the whole continued survival thing. Which I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for ways to try and survive as long as possible here. So we get Ice Form and Simulacrum. Interesting. Ice Form is a good backup if you never find any source of poison resistance. So it's definitely like a, a poor person statue form, if you will. A little bit more dangerous to use, of course, but definitely can have it on the list here. We'll see where our skills are at. Definitely slowly but surely coming along. I was hoping to get a little bit of a better stab on you, but again, fortunately, with this lovely plus four short sword, we do a heck of a lot better. And ranged, we probably are not too interested in. Getting a little bit more dodging and stealth wouldn't be too bad, especially with the aptitude that vampires have for stealth. That goes a heck of a long way. But I think we'll have to leave this curse for the time being. And just keep her moving here. You've watched me a few times and you're not entirely convinced I'm always looking for a way to live. I mean, you definitely have got me there. <laughs> you're not wrong. But of course, that's only for the content you see. I would I would never willingly do anything, but sometimes the the pull of making some sweet, sweet content is too much to to turn down of course at least again that's what i kind of tell myself so that i can get to sleep at night poor poor peter poor poor peter but okay these are all dirt cheap so i think we will just do a quick sweep of all the scrolls and whatnot they'll all be identified right away with ash and zari so that's lovely Nation Zari really wants us to go range, indeed. I'm tempted 
to potentially listen. I think there was actually... Was this the run with the hand crossbow earlier? The hand crossbow is not bad at the end of the day. Zombie Hornet is actually terrifying. Probably should not have gone into this fight. And yet here we are. What do I wish to do with you, friend? Maybe we'll read teleportation. Have to hope that it it hits here. 14 damage. We have 14 AC, so it's not the end of the world. I'll probably still drink one potion just in case. Potion of curing. Okay. And then we will break our armor. Then we'll reset it. And we will hopefully just run away and never face that bad boy again. At least the damage stays persistently since they are a zombie. So maybe over the course of a, a few encounters we can do some good work there. But for the time being here, let's pop around this corner, try and get our frozen ramparts doing as much of the, the heavy lifting as we can here. Absolutely lovely. Dart Slug, could you please just come over here? <laughs> Guess you don't have to, as long as we have poison darts, we're not too poorly off here. Not too shabby. Oh my gosh, there are a lot of you just chilling, hey? How about that? A little bit more experienced. Perfect. Aha. Oh, you know what? I was about to say that this is where things get a little bit tricky, but we actually have resistance to electricity on our lovely artifact gloves here. Contrary to what most of our characters end up experiencing over the, the course of the early game here. So that is lovely indeed. Not sure how we'll fare against two of them facing off against us. Especially since I'm losing darts to deep water if I shoot at this bad boy. At least it's a basic poison dart, so we can, we can kill them real quick. And we'll maybe either ignore this bad boy or try and get them into the, the shallows here. Or if they want to come next to me, that definitely works out in my favor. Perfect. Wow, yeah, so many dart slugs. How about that? So we get Fortitude and Beguiling as our next little bit here. Okay, so Armored Shields again, but Conjurations, Hexes, and Translocations is not too shabby. We have really good aptitude in Hexes, not bad in Translocations. Conjurations, terrible aptitude, but this could alleviate some of that stress if we want to learn any Conjuration magic. So it's not bad for this stage in the game. Could even just throw this on something like our robe? Hmm. I think I'm going to use this blind corner to take care of these orcs while I, I think about this for a set. Let it mull over in my head. Because I think I might want to just swap up to at least leather armor here. Everything's still fully castable. It's a little bit of a boost to our armor class. And then we could curse something to us. I should also put on this Amulet of Reflection, because why the heck not? And let's potentially curse something. Again, I want to save the gloves for a curse that I just really like the sound of. Could do the Amulet of Reflection. If we really want Reflection later down the road, it's fairly likely that another Amulet will come up. So it's a good short stay since the leather armor, I'm hoping we can switch out soon. Artifact would be lovely, but even just some magical leather would be huge. Or some troll leather and get that regen is also pretty fantastic in its own right. So let's go with that and we get everything ID'd, which will definitely help us out in the long run. Probably don't need these ID scrolls whatsoever, so we can drop those bad boys. And we are looking all right here for sure. Two scrolls of blinking is lovely. Magic mapping in case we have some more timed gates we want to go through. And at least one heal wounds potion. So can't complain too much there. What kind of a dagger did we have here? It's probably not better than plus four. I'd be surprised this early in the game. Oh, those smites hurt real bad. Oh, geez Louise really bad aha and i'm not gonna fall for a centaur again here not quite as dangerous at 52 health but it's still not exactly ideal if i could pop around a corner and find you that'd be nice where the heck notice me 
This is where I want you to notice me, please. Perfect. Almost perfect. And there we go. Oh, geez Louise. That first centaur is always a little bit of a trial. And I for sure agree, Thelf, on having the... The poison brand is spectacular in the, the early game here. Does a lot of the heavy lifting for us, especially put it along with the plus four, so we're pretty guaranteed to hit. It's pretty huge. It's definitely run away from you. Jeez Louise. Facing centaurs when there aren't doors nearby that you can just cheese them out with is truly, well and truly terrifying. But hey, we're, we're all right for the moment here. A white pack is quite bad for us though. Unfortunately, with just our cold damage at our disposal, there's not a heck of a lot we can do there. And do, 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 what are we trained right now? Just spell casting is left up. So what else do we do? We could put on fighting for a little bit, try and get just a wee bit of health thrown on our side. Potentially one of these defensive skills. We don't have a shield quite yet. Hmm. I guess we could go armor and see if we can even switch up to something like ringmail for the time being, since we don't have any higher level spells. Fairly likely that everything will still be pretty castable. So let's try it out. We'll just train it up to four since it is such a terrible aptitude. But that may just be enough. And these dart slugs are more annoying than a threat whatsoever. <laughs> so I'm hoping we've gotten rid of the majority of them on this floor. Hello, goes egg. Goodbye. Oh, the whites have noticed us. Hello, friends. Very resistant to cold is absolutely no good. So I'm gonna have to just say goodbye. That's not much better though. Oof, okay. But now that we've taken out the zombie hornet, it means that this level has now reopened up for business. We should be able to make our way through. How about an ogre? I feel like between frozen ramparts and Ozkubus, we actually should be okay to take you down real quick. Not too shabby here. And, ooh, we got some fire magic. Hmm. Could learn even just a little bit of fire. Use something like Scorch to try and clear out some of these early cold resistant enemies that we come across. It's not horrible. Fortunately, fire is one of the few things that we're not very good at, of course, as a vampire. But something to keep in mind at the very least, a potential plan. My ghostly friend and haste is absolutely fantastic. You definitely love to see it. And what do we get? Melee combat and beguiling again, hey? Hmm. Melee combat does give us unarmed. That's kind of the tough part here, is I think that we will be wanting to use Unarm later, but that does put us at a slight disadvantage with Ashinzari because we want that extra slot to curse. Not the end of the world if you have to leave your weapon uncursed, but less than ideal, potentially. Do I throw you on our short sword temporarily, though? We'll probably be using the short sword for a decent little bit here at the very least. So having that extra wee bit of skill might make all the difference in the world. I think we will do that. Plus four short sword can be glued to our body for now. Give us that little bit of an extra edge over our competition here. Because again, the skill bonuses are pretty huge in their own right, but then when you pair that with all of the quality of life improvements that Ashenzari brings to the table, you're in for a pretty pretty sweet ride so what was the issue up here this was just natasha and us doing our best not to accidentally kill them right so we can maybe do a wee bit of exploring just to get our experience up over the the next edge here we're just about leveled up of course so that could be nice before we head back into the the deep unknown here 
Right, let's do a little bit of auto exploring. Hello, Edmund. Lovely to see you. That should be someone that we can take down here. Perfect. We'll keep going with intelligence. Ah, but I definitely should have done, or should have been rather, a little bit more cautious here. I didn't notice that they had a holy wrath flail, so that's why that hurt really bad despite our Ozukuba's armor and whatnot. Unfortunately, not exactly ideal. But hey, we're still alive, so that's all you can really ask for at the end of the day. You can make a decent number of stupid mistakes as long as they're not fatal ones. Maybe that will will humble us a little bit, make sure that we're not getting too far absorbed into our own hubris and making dreadful decisions for the entirety of the run. So that's always a bit of a nice fringe benefit as well. So okay, this stairwell is relatively safe and we could just head down and get the heck out of dodge, so that seems alright. We'll even head around to the left just to try and avoid that huge white pack. And hopefully that does the trick. 